Good evening and happy Sabbath to all. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to Bermuda Institute Consecration Service. Although this will be an abbreviated service, it is my prayer that each one of you will be blessed as we celebrate the graduating class of 2021. Buy your heads and close your eyes for the invocation. Dear Heavenly Father, we would like to first thank you for this day. We are blessed and filled with joy that you have guided the class of 2021 to this important moment in our lives. Give us clarity of mind to move forward with the plans and purposes you have for us. Be with us throughout this graduation weekend, especially this consecration service. May all that is said and done bring honor and glory to your name. Continue to bless the graduates with your love and protection. Give us wisdom and courage as we move forward. We praise your name today and forever. Amen. Like the song, Bermuda is another world. Bermuda Institute is a unique place. From the pre-K to the 12th grade graduates, the teachers and administration, we are all one. I, Chad McGordon, have attended Bermuda Institute from kindergarten to 12th grade. In the whole 13 years I've been here at Bermuda Institute, I have enjoyed it and never missed a beat. From the community fairs and the sports days, to the spirit weeks, fun days, and grub days, there has never been a dull moment. One main thing that I have come to appreciate about BI is that I am able to receive a Christian education. Here at BI, it makes things real when it comes to a personal relationship with Christ. One of the most memorable moments that I can recall at BI is when I got into a very bad accident with a kite string on Thanksgiving Day. Due to this accident, I was out of school for about a month and a half. But during this time, students wrote notes, prayers were sent out, and a few students and teachers paid a visit. 
To this thoughtful deed, I appreciate their acts of kindness, which shows how much we are there for each other. Overall, Bermuda Institute is a closely knitted family with education as a priority and putting God first to ensure that we all press toward the mark. My name is Chad Matt and this is my BI story. Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to our 2021 consecration service. We are gathered here tonight to celebrate the Bermuda Institute graduating class of 2021. I want to thank the parents, family, faculty and staff, board members and the Bermuda Conference of Seven Day Adventists for all of your guidance and prayers. You are the reason we are all here tonight. High school has been an unforgettable experience that will shape our futures. These past four years have been filled with many memorable and influential moments in our lives. Individually, our experiences here are unique, but together we share a common bond as the class of 2021. We have faced many trials and tribulations these past four years, but we were able to overcome them because we are standing here tonight making our families proud. I am thankful to each of you for the experiences we encountered here. We are appreciative of your support and for all of you viewing on the various platforms. We say thank you. May God bless you as you share this experience with us and welcome. Today's scripture reading will be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 10. We were hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We were perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus Christ so also may be manifested in our bodies. Hector M. Quinones feels privileged to pastor the Warwick Seven-Day Adventist and Ministerio Hernandad churches. He is married to Elena Castro Quinones. They are blessed with five children, one who graduated in the class of 2020. Pastor Quinones was the first of two children born in New York to Hector and Demarius, immigrants from the Dominican Republic. He was raised as a Catholic and was a leader in the Incarnation Parish Catholic Youth Organization. No spiritual journey led him to Adventism. However, during his pursuit of a bachelor's degree in public administration, he strayed from his relationship with God which almost cost him his life. Once he reacquainted with the Lord, he left his career in banking to pursue a deeper relationship with the Lord. In June of 2001, he was ordained to the Adventist Pastoral Ministries. He wholeheartedly believes in the imminent return of the Lord. His passion for the salvation of as many souls as he can influence and has dedicated himself to the furthering of Great Commission.
Good evening. I'm Hector Quinones, and I have had the privilege of pastoring this graduating class of 2021 for the past three or so years. I have to say or so because with COVID in and out, it's kind of haphazard, but it's been three wonderful years. So to the BI board, thank you. To the parents who sacrificed and gave so that way these kids could have a Christian education, I wanna thank you. And you guys, every single last one of you. Can't thank you guys enough for allowing me to have been your pastor for all these many years. As a matter of fact, after the first year, I was surprised that I was invited to come back. <laughs> but, uh, but thank you guys. How about we open up the Bible? So get your Bibles, virtual or otherwise. We're just going to read two texts, okay? It's going to be found in Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. The Bible says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, and he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Bow our heads for a word of prayer. Is that all right? Let's pray. Father God, Lord, this is the message that I know you wanted me to share with them. So, Father, if it's going to be given, if it's going to be delivered, if it's going to be effectual, and if it is going to be edifying, it will be because you have deemed it so. And you have made it possible. So, Lord, I ask you that you would please touch my lips and touch my mind and touch my heart, that the words that I say may be acceptable unto thee. And, Father, if it is going to do the work, it is because you have prepared a heart for it. So, Lord, touch the ears of those who would hear your word. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So Sister Goldborn gave me a call while I was, I don't know, maybe in the States. I'm not kind of sure, kind of hazy on that. And she told me that you guys wanted me to be the speaker for your graduating class. Actually, she, we didn't really talk. She sent me a text, okay? And when I got the WhatsApp message, I just double-checked it and made sure that it was from Sister Goldborn. I actually sent back a message, is this you? I sent her a little password that she had to be able to answer to make sure that her phone hadn't been hacked. We're not going to get into that, right? We're not going to get into Sister Goldborn's phone getting hacked. Let's just leave that alone, right? But any old hoot, anyway, verified that it was her. Now, why would I do that? It's real simple. Y'all can choose a whole lot of other people to share a message with you. So I said, well, okay, fine, not a problem. And immediately I started thinking, well, you, some of you know me, and those of you who don't, you're very blessed. But I started going immediately to Revelation. And Revelation chapter 3, go low in figure, and Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 22, the church of Laodicea. Not because you're naked, not because you're blind, not because you're destitute, not because you're lost, not because of anything like that, but because that's the last generation. That's the generation also that no one expects anything out of. And yet, it's the generation that sits on the throne of God. It's the generation that succeeds when no one thought they could succeed. And they succeed, why? Because God told them they could. And they believed more in what God said about them than in what their mirrors revealed to them than what other people believed in them. That's why I wanted to speak about Revelation 
the Church of Laodicea in context with you, your graduation, and your future. But the Holy Spirit said no. Yeah, the Holy Spirit did. The Holy Spirit helped me to remember some very important things about you guys. Some things that those who know you say about you. Behind your back, they say that you're a model. They say you're an example. They say that they have never seen a class that is so enmeshed as you. And I'm not, I'm not saying all of you feel that way. Of course not. But most of you do. Most of you do know the love you have for one another. So much so that even as a family, sometimes y'all get unhappy with one another. So much so that even as a family, when you're hurting, you all hurt together. I was able to witness that when we lost Kajani. How I saw you guys come together and give a purpose to the pain. So much so that you wouldn't leave it alone and you decided to make it a movement. Call attention to the needless death of young people on the road. To call attention to the value that each one of us has and how important it is to cherish love and to cherish life. And I do believe that because of that movement, lives were saved and people's hearts were changed. I do believe that because of that movement, individuals started paying a little closer attention to how they handle out on the road. This is so sad, made so even true now, when just recently we had two more fatalities because of when we had two more fatalities on the road with, with bikers, I saw the love that you had for one another, that familial love that unites and binds together. I saw how you guys showed that love again to one another when we went to Gajani's parents' house, and we tried to bring them the love of God. How we met together in their house, just had a worship service, going through the loss of their son, and now COVID, extremely difficult. But when you guys were there, and I witnessed it, didn't even have to do anything. I just witnessed it. I saw how you guys shared that love and let the whole world know that that name will not be erased. That every single one of you still holds them true. Holds it in your heart. Then again, as 2021 came around, we had to decide, what are we going to do? What are we going to do for worship? Will we just feed ourselves? Will we share Bible verses one with another, which is all, all good and all well and all dandy. But is that all that our Christian experience is? Or are we going to do something more? Well, you guys decided to follow the counsels found in James. James chapter 1, verse 27, where the Bible says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted before the world. 
That is what you decided to do. And together, we brought food baskets to people. Couldn't feed everybody, but we fed some people. And we fed them, why? Because that's what your class is about. Your class is about what can we do for somebody else. Yeah, the message to the Church of Philadelphia aptly describes you guys. If you're interested in doing a little Bible study, you'll see that the message to the Church of Philadelphia was a message to a missionary church, a message to a church that was going to go out and share the gospel and share the wonderful news of a risen Savior, a Savior that can give us the power to overcome our besetting sins and also give us the power to show love in a time when the world so desperately needs love. And we're not talking about just the word love or just, you know, words of affirmation. We're speaking about tangible ways in which love can be expressed. In visiting somebody who's hurting. In giving food to somebody who's hungry. In clothing somebody who is naked. And comforting somebody who's in pain. And encouraging somebody that this will not be the end of their life. That this time of pain, of sorrow, of confusion, of doubt, of weakness is just but a moment in their life. It's not even a chapter, it's just a sentence. I saw how you rallied around each other. And sometimes we did it together and sometimes we did it one-on-one. -on -one. How we encouraged one another. And we helped one another. See, that's love. That's what the world needs to see. The world needs to see what love looks like. And as I think about you guys, some of you going overseas and some of you remaining here, I think of the missionary spirit that you do have. The ability to share tangible evidences of love to one another, to individuals that you know, to individuals that you barely know, to make an impact even on those who you will never meet, but they will hear about you. The Church of Philadelphia, historically speaking, was a missionary church, a church that took the truths of the gospel around the world and evangelized the world with the written word. But I propose to you that you are the next generation of the Philadelphian church. You will not only share the words, but you will share the life. And how is this applicable? to last day events. Well, all you got to do is read Matthew chapter 25 or Isaiah 58. In Isaiah 58, God asks, what is true fasting or sacrifice to me? Is it to deprive yourself of hunger? No, it's to deprive yourself of selfishness, of looking at what is wrong and what is lacking in your life and look at what is wrong in justice and lacking justice, food, ability, opportunities to other people. If you don't think that the Bible speaks about it, you haven't read Matthew 25 either. 
where God sits and he looks at the ones on his right and he tells those on his right, come in. Come in. Why? Because when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. And when I was naked, you gave me clothes. And when I was lonely, you visited me. And when I had no hope, you brought me hope. You did that. I witnessed it. Other people saw it. You are the second generation of the Philadelphian church. Some of you are going to go overseas. And while you are looking for an academic career, when you are looking for some type of career in politics, in law, in medicine, in whatever it is, I ask you one thing. Don't forget what God was able to accomplish through you here in Bermuda. Take it with you. Do it there. Because they need to see it. And for those of you who are going to remain here in Bermuda, I'm asking you, don't let this be the high point of your life. Continue to be an example for those who need to see an example. I'm asking all of you to be the missionaries that you are. Continue. Now I have good news for you. I'm going to ask you now just to look at verse 8 and see the promise that God has for you. Please see that in verse 8, he says, I have opened the door and no one can shut. That is the door of opportunity. That is the door of opportunity that God has given to you. Why? Because you have demonstrated that you're willing and able to show the love of God to a world. You did it here. Now go do it there. As we close, I want to remind you of these words. Jesus said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his brother. I also want you to remember this. Jesus also said, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Disciple, missionary, the Church of Philadelphia, the graduating class of 2021, of the Bermuda Institute of Seventh-day Adventists. It has been my pleasure, it has been my honor to be your pastor, to know you, to know of you, to hear about you. Thank you for allowing me to do that. God bless you. Let's pray. Father God, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that there is a generation that will be your disciples to a dying, to a dying world. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to see a generation of youth who will change and transform the world with their love. Lord, I pray that you would keep them. I pray, Father, that you would hold on to them. And I pray, Lord, 
that they would bring many to your feet through their example. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for bringing this class and our school through these tumultuous days. And this class in particular, the graduation of 2021, for they have been through a rough time, O oh Lord, a loss of their friend and classmate Kajani. Through this pandemic, Lord, we bring them before you as we look to the future, Father, we wish to consecrate them in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask that you will guide them. May they, Father, while they cherish yesterday, continue to reach for tomorrow. Give them, Father, your guidance. May their plans be blessed to fulfill your purpose. Grant them health, courage, integrity, faith, love, and hope in the soon return of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh God, that as they live out their days, that you will grant them the desires of their hearts and make all of their plans as they rest in you succeed so that this world may see Jesus Christ lived out in their lives, that someday and that day soon, as others look at them, they may see your greatness and remember you as they remember them. So, Father, into your hands we place these graduates and ask your blessing upon them. May their lives tell for you O oh God, and may they be a blessing to others. We consecrate them into your care, into your hands. May their life and legacy bring honor and glory to our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor Q, on behalf of the graduating class of 2021, we would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your words of encouragement and wisdom as we venture on. Thank you also for being our class pastor, ministering to us and encouraging us to have a positive influence on anyone who needs help. Please accept this token of appreciation from the class of 2021. Thank you again for your ministry and may God continue to use you to encourage our others to follow Christ. Again, thank you. Please bow your heads and close your eyes as we close with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the time we spent together this evening. As this chapter of our lives is about to end, give us the wisdom to make wise and honest decisions, and as we seek to start a new and exciting journey in our lives. Please fill our minds with thoughts towards you and give us the courage to not look at changes with fear. Help us to have hope that we will become everything you want us to be. Thank you for the message this evening, and may you keep these words in our hearts. Lastly, I ask that you keep the graduates and their families safe as they celebrate this milestone. In your name we pray, amen. Dream, put your mind